welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan, AKA Simply Simmer, and today's Sims 4 Speed Build is inspired by Bob's Burgers. Now, this is actually the second time that I've done Bob's Burgers. The first time that I did it was actually a stop motion video, and it was the very first stop motion video that I had ever done. So it was actually a little bit on the clunky side, and looking back on it, I definitely realized there were a lot of things that I missed, and I wanted to go back and redeem myself and make it just a little more detailed than I had before and also maybe work on the video editing a little bit better and make it not so clunky looking. So I made the first Bob's Burgers video in February of 2020, so my channel was only like two months old at the time, and I don't even think that I had all of the packs yet that I that were even out at that time, um, but I do have all the packs now, and there have been a ton of new releases since then, so I'm really excited. I had a lot more options to choose from as well whenever I was making this. So in the kitchen, or I guess the dining room area, um, I did use a lot of pieces from the new Country Kitchen kitchen pack and you'll notice I use that once we go upstairs into their apartment as well. It just kind of gives more of like a, a grungy type feel I guess is what I'm going for here but it, it's not new and shiny by any means. I mean they're definitely the Belchers are struggling to keep their restaurant together so I thought that it worked really well for this. So up next I am placing the booths down and in the stop motion video I actually did not have these as functional pieces because the booths are actually actually too big for what I was going for. And I kind of went back and forth on whether I wanted to pull the same thing that I did last time, where I basically just cut the booth in half by that wall. So it was halfway sticking outside and it was not functional. But I do like to keep all of my builds functional for your Sims. So I went ahead and just made them larger, even though it doesn't, it's not exactly perfect to what you'd see in the show but it works better for the game. I'm also fairly certain that I did not upload my last one to the gallery, uh, so I super apologize for that. I did get a lot of comments like, I can't find this on the gallery, and I, I'm really sorry about that, but I will have this one on the gallery, and all of my gallery information is in the description below the video. This next part is one of my favorite things that I did throughout the build, and that is this poster of the flying burger. So in the front of the restaurant they actually have this on the wall and it's just a picture of a burger that's flying through the air and obviously we don't have anything like that in the game so I used this picture of all these butterflies that are flying away and then I used this little burger picture I guess is what you could call that I think it's supposed to be like a wall sticker but I had just resized it and then raised it up to make it look like it was part of that butterfly picture this next part is actually a little bit of a build hack. So when you place a coffee maker on a counter, it centers it. And the coffee maker that's next to their cash register is not really centered, and I wanted it to be a little bit off to the side, but I still wanted it to maintain its functionality. So in order to do that, I took a little island counter piece, shrunk it down, and then I placed the coffee maker on top of the shrunken counter piece. Then I was able to move the tiny counter piece underneath the counter that I wanted to go on, and it made it look like the coffee maker was able to move around wherever I wanted it to, but it still maintains its functionality. So that's a pretty neat hack if you ever want to maintain functionality, but also move some of those appliances around. On the other side of the restaurant, I did place a few different wall pieces, and then they also have a lot of pipes all over the place, so I utilized those as well. So they do have the big ice cream machine in the show, and they do have an ice cream maker in the game, but it definitely does not look anything remotely close to what was in the show. So I actually just placed the espresso machine instead, and that looked a lot closer to the ice cream machine that they have in the show. In the corner of the restaurant, they have a TV that is on a little shelf. So I put a diagonal wall and then I put the shelf on it. And then once that was placed, I was able to raise up a TV and then I just deleted the wall behind it. So it made this appearance that the TV was on a shelf in the corner. Underneath the TV, they do have a little table that just has some random restaurant equipment on it that makes it easier to bust tables. And then of course, behind that wall, they do have their crawl space. So I did go ahead and add that in there as well. we're 
moving into the kitchen and just to start out with, I did move that wall because I do like to build with the walls up and it kind of prevents me from being able to see what I'm doing. So that's why to start with it looks bigger but I do go back and I shrink it down a little bit more to make it fit better. In the corner they do have I think it's some kind of a small appliance and I used one of the ovens that came from the interior design pack that just came out. So to create the deep fryers that they have in the show, I actually just used two of the pancake griddles that came with the base game and obviously they're not gonna work as deep fryers but they were the closest thing that I could find. The other half of the kitchen isn't shown as frequently during the show but it is shown every now and then and they only have a few things over there like a sink and some counters, things like that. So I used a lot of the items from the dine out pack and it worked really well for the kitchen. So in just a minute here, you'll actually notice that there is a bathroom that's already been constructed. I totally forgot that there was a whole episode where they had remodeled the bathroom in the restaurant and I had just placed down like some bathroom stalls so just ignore those for now but in just a second I'm gonna come back and redo that and um, so just pretend that that doesn't exist right now <laughs> and jumping back over to the crawl space reference I did place uh, I believe it's called the Kula La Bear that came with the kids room stuff pack uh, that is supposed to be referencing the Coochie Kopi nightlight that Bob found <laughs> so I thought that that was just a nice little nod to that reference. This next space is supposed to be the walk-in cooler and we don't really have too many items that we can do to recreate a cooler so I just placed some of the restaurant shelves in here as well. So right here is where I'm noticing that I cannot fit those stairs where they're supposed to go. So I kind of had to cheat it just a little bit and I extended the wall a little bit past where it was supposed to go and I placed the stairs there. Really they're supposed to go right in front of that side door and then they can walk up into their apartment but I couldn't make that happen because those booths in the dining room are two tiles too large and that's exactly the amount of space that I needed for this. So that does kind of stink, but I was able to make it work. And then I do kind of start to place the basement, but I don't go through and furnish that until the very end of the video. Okay, so up next, I'm going back and fixing the bathroom that I had messed up on earlier. So I decided to actually reference two different episodes with this bathroom. There is one episode where Mr. Fish Odor's brother comes to town and Bob asks him if he can fix the plumbing because they have a lot of brown water coming out of it. And rather than fixing the plumbing, he just went through and renovated the entire thing and it looked terrible. He went super modern with it, with black walls, black flooring, and then there were three mysterious plumbing appliances that uh, you couldn't tell which one was the sink or the toilet. So I placed two of the same sinks in the bathroom, and then the toilet, I'm actually referencing a separate episode where Jean finds that toilet in the woods and becomes friends with it. And there's actually a toilet that comes with the city living pack that you can befriend, so I thought that that was perfect for this. Up next, I'm working a little bit on the exterior, but I do come back and I do more work on that later on in the video. So I'm just placing some of the green siding down and then a little bit of their roof as well. And then there's also a little piece on the front of the house that sticks out. It's actually part of their living room and it's just got a couple windows around it. So I started out with that on the exterior. We also don't really have a sign in the game that I could use to really closely make it say Bob's Burgers. So I just used some of the red awning pieces just to kind of reference what it's supposed to be. So up next, I'm going through and I'm putting together the floor plan for the apartment part of this build. And there's actually a lot of floor plans out there on Google and just a couple of Pinterest searches as well. So this part wasn't too bad to figure out the floor plan on. Now each of the kids have their own room, although Louise is actually in a closet. So they converted that closet to a bedroom for her. I think at one point during the show, they mentioned that she didn't want to share a room with Tina anymore, so they just moved her right there. 
Then the first room that I'm furnishing is the kitchen. And for the most part, most of these rooms stay the same throughout the entire series, but there are little things that kind of change throughout. And I did notice on, I believe I was referencing the first episode whenever I put this together, uh, all of the walls were yellow there, but then later on in the series, the walls do change. So there is some paneling in there later on, um, but it does not start there. So I did start with this room being like that pale yellow color, but I do actually end up going back and changing it. So in their kitchen, they do have a microwave on top of their refrigerator. So I did the same type of thing here that I did with the coffee maker downstairs. So I just placed a microwave on top of a shrunken down counter piece, and then I was able to raise that up to make it look like it was sitting on top of the fridge. Now that does make the microwave non-functional, so just keep that in mind if you do ever decide to use that hack. I do place a coffee maker next to their refrigerator, although it's not actually a coffee maker in the show, it's just a little toaster, and that was the closest thing that I could find, so I just placed that there instead using that same build hack that I had mentioned with the coffee maker in the restaurant and the microwave on top of the fridge. Then I went through and I just cluttered some more things up. They do actually have a blender next to their sink, not a coffee maker, but I mean, I guess coffee makers are the closest small appliance that I could use for all of these. So that was as close as I could get with it. Then on the refrigerator, I am placing a couple different notes and these are actually some debug notes that you can find with the parenthood pack. And then I also like to place little calendars on the fridge as well. It just kind of spruces it up. Next to the stove, I believe it was a toaster oven that they have, and I did place some of these larger counter ovens. It's not that big in the show, but it was as close as I could get, and I still think that it worked pretty well. Now outside of the kitchen, they do have a fire escape, but I will go back and I'll add that in later on in the video. And for whatever reason, every time I would change the wallpaper in this room, it would delete that microwave. So I probably added that microwave back in like five or six times throughout this build. I don't know why that that happens, but it does sometimes. And you just have to go back and double check all your work just to make sure it stays there in the end. The next room that I'm working on is the bathroom and the episode that I referenced for this was actually the most recent Thanksgiving episode where Jean had food poisoning. So they show that pretty frequently throughout that episode and it made it pretty easy to get all of the angles of that bathroom. So they just have you know their basic toilet sink and their shower and tub. They do have a toilet plunger next to their toilet but the only plunger that we have in the game is super, super tiny. I think it was supposed to be like an item that you can find as a detective, but I didn't place it there because it just looked kind of ridiculous. But they do have a box of Kleenexes on the back of their toilet, and then I also just added a few other things like a hand towel and some artwork on the walls as well. So the hallway in their apartment actually is more of like a green color and they also have green doors, but I do actually end up going back in at the end and changing all of the doors to a brown color because it doesn't, it just doesn't really look good to me with the green doors on this brownish colored wall. We're moving into Tina's room and this was one of my favorite rooms to put together. So obviously Tina has a whole bunch of horse things and boy posters all over her room. So I had a lot of fun with this. Now in the game, we don't really have a ton of horse items, but I did take kind of like a llama approach to this. So you'll see that there are lots of llama items throughout her room. I did place a little writing desk for her so that then she can write her erotic friend fiction books and I do go back through and I spruce that up a lot and put all of her binders and things like that on there and then there is the bad Tina episode and they show Jean and Louise hiding in her closet so I did put a little closet in here for her with a bunch of clothes and shoes and these are the closet pieces that came with the interior decorator pack. In the corner of her room, she does have a little table and this is where most of her horse items are. So I did go through and I placed all those llama items and then I placed some llama artwork as well. 
And then just kind of throughout her room, I placed some more of those llama pieces. And then here I am putting down those binders that I had mentioned for her friend fiction. Then on her other wall, she does have basic things like her dresser, which is covered in a bunch of girly items. I also placed another one of those Kula La Bears that's supposed to reference the Coochie Kopi. Then these last few seconds in her room, I'm just going through and just adding a few more things like some rugs. I did update the color of her carpet, which is actually, it's more of a purple shade, but we don't have purple carpet in the game. So I went with pink and then just adding a few other things like her backpack, some more llama items and some just random boxes as well. There is one small scene in one episode somewhere where it does show that she has a little TV on an end table. So I did go through and I placed that there, although I don't think that that's seen in every episode. is Louise's room and as I mentioned earlier this is a bedroom that was converted from a closet. In some episodes it shows that the bed is kind of across from the door and then some it shows that the door is at the end of the bed so maybe she moves her room around a little bit. I couldn't really figure it out so the layout here is just based on one of the episodes that I could find but she does have like a little tree stump nightstand next to her table and then she's got a mushroom nightlight on it as well. So we did have a mushroom nightlight, so I was very excited to be able to use that, and that was pretty close. I also feel like if Louise was a sim, she would definitely be into the void critters, so I placed a lot of void critter stickers all over her walls, and that was also kind of referencing all of her posters that she has throughout her room. On the other side of her room, it wasn't really ever shown, so I just placed a little hanging closet from the new interior design pack, and then I also placed a little kids artwork table as well. I don't know that that's actually really there, but I couldn't really find any episodes where we could see this side of her room. Next, I'm going back through the hallway and just adding some additional artwork. Now you will see here that there is some extra space next to the stairs. There wasn't really a way I could work around that. It's just the way that those booths in the restaurant with those two extra tile spaces, it just messed up the whole other side of the build. So I am aware that there's some extra space there, but that's the best that I could do without destroying it all and starting over. So now we're moving into Jean's room, and his room actually isn't really shown as often as Tina's room, but I was able to find enough shots to be able to put this one together. So he does have a little corner and table in the front of his room with some action figures on it, and then lots of different posters throughout his room. The episode that I referenced the most for this room was the episode where Linda and Jean talk about their spa Saturdays, and then Linda has to go to a women's conference and can't spend time with him for a few weeks. So this was actually shown quite a few times throughout that episode. So it was pretty easy to get all of the different angles of his room there as well. So of course I had to add his keyboard to his room. So I used the DigiRad keyboard that came from City Living. And then on the other side of his room, he does have a little pink guitar. So I placed that bunny guitar. I thought that that was the closest that would work for Jean. And then I just placed a bunch of random things on this side of his room. He's a very odd character, so I placed a lot of odd items that didn't really make sense together, but in Jean's room, they would make sense. Between the door to his room and the closet door, there's actually only a light switch there, but we don't have light switches in the game, so I just placed this weird item that I believe came with the paranormal pack. Up next, we're moving into the living room and the couch, I just, I couldn't find one that was super close. It actually looks a lot fluffier in the show, uh, but this is the closest that I could get in color. Above the couch, they do have a piece of artwork that's supposed to be, I think, whenever the diner very first opened. So the closest I could find came from the Strangerville pack, I think, and it's just a picture of a diner with a truck outside of the front of it. So I thought that that was pretty close. 
On the other side of the living room, they do have a painting with some wine glasses. So I did find that wine glass painting that I believe came with Dine Out and I was able to use that there, which worked out pretty well. And then they do have their TV stand with their big tube TV. So I just went ahead and oversized one of the TVs from the game and placed that there. On each side of the window, they have two shelves and each of those shelves have just some kind of random knickknacks there. So I went through and I just fluffed those up. And then on the other side of the living room, they have a big bookshelf. Up next, we're moving into Bob and Linda's room and there's actually not a lot of stuff in their room. It was a very, very basic room and it was the easiest to build for sure. So they have some purple walls and blue carpet and then really the only items that they have in there is their bed, some end tables, and then their dresser which has a mirror on it. I actually, instead of placing a dresser, I placed a vanity. It's not quite the same as what's in the show but it was pretty close. And then on the other side of their room, they've got a little chair. It's actually more of a maroon color, but I didn't really want to use the same chair that I used in the living room, so I went with this red one instead. Then there is one episode where the kids actually find a present for Linda from Bob and it was in their closet and it was that ring and then they end up losing it in the pool later on in the episode. So I did put a little nod to their closet in there as well. we're moving to the back of the restaurant and the apartment so I'm going through first and I'm adding the fire escape which has yellow fencing around it and then I was actually able to use the ladder properly that came with eco lifestyle and then the back side of their house in that alleyway is always just a big mess so I placed a dumpster with a bunch of pipes on the back of the house and then I went through the debug menu and placed a lot of different trash piles just to kind of create that dirty feel that they always have in the alley behind their house. Up next, we're moving to the front of the house. So I started out just by placing down the sidewalk and then I used a sign that came with cats and dogs and I just oversized it. And then I went back and I used that same burger sticker that I used in the restaurant itself. And I put it on both sides of the sign just to kind of show that this is a burger restaurant. Then to finish off the front of the lot, I went through the debug menu and I placed down a few items that are seen in front of the restaurant. Uh, and those are things like the mailbox, some trees that are within planters, and then some electrical poles as well. not least we're moving down into the basement so I kind of thought long and hard about how I wanted to approach the basement there is the episode where they turned it into that casino and I was thinking about putting all of that in there but I just decided against it so all that I really put down here was the shelf and then they did have a table with a meat grinder so I used the hot pot that came from snowy escape and then I did just place a little nod to their casino by placing that gaming llama table. And then I think that that was, that was enough to get the point across. So that wraps it up for this video and I really hope that you all enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a thumbs up. We are just about to jump into the final walkthrough, so make sure to stick around to the very end of that. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. It really helps support me and keep getting videos out to you. So make sure to stick around for that final walkthrough and I will see you all next time. Bye everyone.